So first of all, I'm going to explain the answer by egoticity. What is egoticity? Oh, there are two concepts I'm going to uh, explain in mathematical terms uh, in this talk. Uh, the first one is egoticity. The second one is uh, shadowing. So uh, these are the only two slides with uh, some non-trivial mathematical equations. So please pay attention, although it's uh, some uh, uh, there is a, a long equation here. Egoticity essentially says the time average of function along the trajectory starting from almost anywhere would be equal to the ensemble average. OK, so what do we mean by time average? This equation explains what we mean by a time average. So again, we are solving a OD, du dt equal to f of u. And the j is a function of the state of the system u. So j is a function of u. And uh, what is in the parenthesis is a time average of the function over a period of t. So the time average here is defined as a limit of the time averaging span going to infinity. So it is an infinitely long time average of some function, right? That's actually what we usually mean by a statistics of the dynamical system. Egodicity says that this j or this uh, bracket j, infinitely long time average j, it does not depend on the initial condition. If you start from almost anywhere, if you start from almost any initial condition, u at time zero, right, u at time zero, you would obtain exactly the same infinitely averaged j. And it is equal to an ensemble average. So again, if you start an ensemble, right, as long as uh, the ensemble has a density, right, uh, you evolve the ensemble for a long time and average the j on the set of ensembles, you would get the same average. So this is egodicity. And uh, it is proven mathematically for a wide range of dynamical systems and also experimentally observed for many things, including many turbulent Flows. Here, I'm giving an example of egodicity for the Lorentz equation. So for the Lorentz equation at uh, a set of uh, a pretty big set of uh, parameter ranges, you can prove egodicity uh, analytically. So on the left, you see the distribution of a trajectory in the X and Z space when the trajectory has a length of a thousand. On the right hand side, you see the evolution of an ensemble of initial conditions, right? Over uh, when when you evolve the ensemble, starting from a tiny square around here, you evolve for five seconds and you get a distribution like that. Of course, the left and right looks remarkably different. However, when you increase the time span, on the left you increase the time span from a thousand to ten thousand, and on the right you evolve for another five seconds they look more similar right uh, between each other and as you further increase the trajectory to a uh, hundred thousand of length and evolve the ensemble for 50 time units they look identical on the uh, on the left it is a distribution of a single trajectory over a long time on the right it is the instantaneous distribution of a large ensemble, I think I used uh, something like uh, 500 million uh, points for the ensemble. The distribution looks identical. If the distribution looks identical, then any function, right, uh, that uh, operates on the on the distribution. I mean, it, you can you can uh, write the time average, right, as the uh, the distribution coupled with the function j uh, in, in both cases. So, so if the distribution looks like the same, then for any function, the time average would be equal to the ensemble average. So if a godicity is true, then if you perturb the initial condition for any amount, not just a small amount, 
the statistics would not be changed at all, right? That's one of the arguments for a butterfly effect not being able to affect the climate. 